while the LADB is tackling the human aspect, the construction of the bridge goes on and gradually the structure assumes a definite shape. All junctions on the approaches are free of level crossings except the Alakoro Junction and the Lagos End where traffic signal lights will be installed. This part is constructed mainly from pre-cost yard concrete component, manufactured in the pre-costing yard, transported in badges and erected by means of large cranes of maximum capacity of 170 tons. Here at Surulere, work is in progress to provide accommodation for the displaced residents of Olowo Bo area. The funds for these buildings are provided by the federal government. Tenders were invited, and the building contracts were awarded to the best tenders. For effective supervision, the LADB maintains inspectors of works at the sites. Altogether, 57 blocks of multi-story flats are to be built. The buildings comprise different types of accommodation units, ranging from the single self-contained bed sitter to the four bedroom house units. There are a total of 1,350 units, consisting of 2,842 rooms. This will provide accommodation for about 2,000 families, comprising nearly 12,000 persons. The landlords of the lower bore area have to be housed temporarily along with their tenants here. Later, the landlords will be allocated land to build upon to their individual taste, or they could purchase houses built by the LEDB. Within the stipulated time, the buildings were completed and ready for occupation. Surulere, which was a swampy vegetation some 15 years ago, has become a housing estate. Apart from selling plots of land and insisting on erection of modern buildings, the LEDB has also built different types of modern buildings for sale to the public. The Surulere housing estate has a sewage disposal plant which is the first of its kind in West Africa. health center to cater for the well-being of the inhabitants of Surulere is provided. This is the most painful part for these residents of Olobo affected by the construction of the new bridge. Evacuation now begins.
The Lagos Executive Development Board provides transport and laid on other facilities to make evacuation easier. Understandably, however, some of the residents are reluctant to move. Believe it or not, this is a real safe coming out from the slum area. the LEDB only four months from the actual acquisition of land at Olobo and the resettlement of the people affected. This is an excellent and laudable performance on the part of the Lagos Executive Development Board. from Olobo arrives in a lorry provided by the LEDB. It will take some time to get adjusted to the new surroundings. It is definitely a change for the better. just resettled at Surulere have adjusted to the new environment. Pleasant surroundings, new thinking, new clean habits. Work on the new bridge is progressing satisfactorily. And here, the Ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany, His Excellency Mr. Axenfeld, and the Federal Commissioner for Works and Housing, Mr. Femi Okunu, have come to see for themselves the progress so far made. Commissioner Mr. Femi Okunu, who was ministries responsible for the construction of the bridge, has shown considerable interest in the various stages of the work. Here again, the Commissioner, along with top officers of his ministry and officers of the Lagos Executive Development Board, have come on yet another visit. <laughs> of inspection demonstrates the teamwork that exists among the contracting firm of Julius Berger, the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, and the LEDB. It is this cooperation that has made it possible for the work to progress without hedges and according to schedule. Although the Commissioner is a lawyer by profession, here he demonstrates his comradeship. The Director of Works, Mr. Williams, joins his Commissioner.
The new bridge is situated about 600 yards west of Carter Bridge and nearly parallel to it. Its length is 5,000 feet along the main axis. But with all its turning loops for access and exit, there is a total bridge length of approximately 3 miles. There are two dual carriageways on either side of the median separation. There are also pedestrian and cyclist tracks on both sides. The overall bridge width is about 95 feet. By the middle of December 1967, the first crossing by a vehicle was recorded, and the second mainland bridge transforms from the stage of construction to that of completion. On the eve of the opening ceremony, here the second mainland bridge stands in all its glory and majesty. Total volume of concrete, 92,000 cubic yards. High tensile steel, 4,800 tons. Pre-stressed steel, 1,700 tons. Hydraulic sand fill, 261,000 cubic yards. Illumination, ultra-modern and sophisticated.
Thank <laughs> you.